All right, good morning and welcome to Panorama Airfield. Just arrived, it is six o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna get the gate open here, get the hangar open, jump into the plane, and we're gonna do a, I suppose, a video on the performance of my new aircraft. Alright, so we've pulled the plane out. Uh, I'm just gonna finish up my pre flight now and then we'll head out onto the runway. Wind looks nice and calm today. Uh, look at that wind sock over there. So, nice and calm, so it should be a, a good day to show you guys the real performance uh, results that we get out of this KFA Safari. So just to keep you guys in the loop, uh, this was the second Safari built with a Rotax 915 engine. Um, I believe I'm the only person on, in the world that makes videos on YouTube about the Safari with a Rotax 915. Uh, so yeah, that is really where all this performance is coming from. So um, we'll show you 141 horsepower turbocharged. We're currently at 5,000 feet. Um, but yeah, we've got 100% horsepower up until 15,000 feet, I believe it is. Uh, so, yeah, this, this engine's definitely a performer. I'd love to see how the prop and the wing performs down at sea level. I think what we'll get into first is um, takeoff roll. That's fairly easy. There's no real pilot skill required in getting a short takeoff roll. Um, the next thing we could do is climb out. Okay, so it's just me today. We've probably got half tanks of fuel. Um, so we'll show you how nicely we climb out in this aircraft, do some cruise numbers, uh, perhaps we'll fly down to the Heineken factory which is on the other side of the GF or the general flying area here in South Africa. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys after we've done the pre-flight inside the cockpit and ready to take off. the general flying area. Okay, so we're just taxiing away from the hangar now. And today's video, as I've mentioned previously, we are going to be doing a performance report, a performance review on this uh, Airbay Safari with a Rotax 915 turbocharged engine. Uh, we're currently at 5,000 feet. Temperature, when I last checked, was about uh, 17, 18 degrees. And our Q&H setting, 1024 which you should now all be able to see on uh, the Sony camera that I've rigged here. It might not look the best on the front facing cockpit, but I've rigged the Sony camera so you've got a better indication of what you can see, on what I can see on the EFIS. Um, I'm not too sure how well it's gonna hold up. Hopefully it doesn't uh, bob around too much. But when we're up in the air, it shouldn't be too bad. You just need it on the initial rollout um, and then perhaps the landing speed as well but we'll make sure that it's straight during this flight. Well, let me just test my controls, make sure everything's working correctly. Elevator, rudder, aileron, brakes, and park brake comes on. Mixture master, okay, so we don't have any mixture. Master is on, mags are both on. In this case, it is ECUs or lanes, as indicated. Uh, we can run up the engine now. We're just at about 50 degrees. We can run it up above 45 up to about three and a half thousand feet sorry three and a half thousand rpm and we're going to go lane a first egt coolant temperature disappears lane light comes on we flick it back on rpm does not drop too much wait for the light to go out all right test lane b all temperature and pressure disappears all right rpm doesn't go out too much camera should be catching all of this if it's not too shaky and we can flick that back on all temperature comes back, all pressure comes back, RPM is stable and within limits. Alright, that looks good. 
can test the prop. All right, this is too low of an RPM for the prop to work, but we just want to siphon it through just to make sure we do have free movement on our prop controller. We can bring the power back to idle. All right, I'm going to make sure that prop is still running at idle, and it is. Temperatures and pressures are all in the green. Instruments set up, hatches, harness that's we closed up both sides and on the back door. Uh, if you guys haven't seen my review on just the outside external features of this aircraft, I will link it up in the cards. Uh, I think it's on this side. <laughs> I'll link it up in the cards, yeah, so go have a look at that if you want to have a look at all the external features and what we have actually equipped on this aircraft. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on the performance numbers. Center on the traffic, India Delta Hotel, entering and lining up runway 20. Alright, as we line up, what to do last wind is a little to nothing wind. Uh, transponder comes to altitude. Um, the eye is aligned. Lights come on. Alright, so we're going to do a nice tail up take off here. Um, try and hold the brakes as, as long as possible and then get a nice short takeoff. Really what we want to be looking for is indicate that about 38 knots we can actually pull those flaps, pop off the ground, use that ground effect and then climb out from there. So let's see what happens. Then we want to climb on at about 65 knots. Alright, that's 1,100 feet a minute. 1,200 feet a minute, 1,300 feet a minute. 1,400 feet a minute. And there we are, 1,450 feet a minute was what our indicated climb speed was with just me, half fuel. Um, I'm glad the Sony camera didn't actually move around too much. What I'll do is we just climb a bit more, get to about 6,300 feet and then we can just do a cruise test, show you what cruise speeds are coming out of this aircraft. Um, we'll show you indicated and true. Flying into a bit of a headwind at the moment. Alright, we can level off here, that's fine. That's 6,000 feet. We're going to aim directly for the Heineken factory and we're going to do about 30 inches of manifold pressure. I'm going to pull the prop back to about 4,700 RPM with my prop controller here. Alright, come back, come back, there we go. Prop starts to reduce an RPM. Okay, that's about 4.7 now. Okay, we're still in a little bit of a climb, let's trim down. Okay, that's 95 indicated, speed is still climbing, 96 indicated. Alright, and that's about uh, cruise there now. 97, we've got a plus 10 feet per minute climb rate and 97 knots indicated. Temperatures and pressures are all in the green, 92 degrees on the oil. Water temperature is good and the oil pressure is good. 96 and we're truing at 100, call it 106, 107 uh, knots. So yeah, basically this will be your perfect sort of uh, cruise setup in this aircraft. We can pretty much be hands off here. Um, I can actually trim down just a touch. We can pretty much be hands off and the plane flies itself. It's inherently stable, uh, which is really, really nice for a tail dragger. Um, we're getting cruise speeds of 96 knots indicated, 90, sorry, 106 knots true, 93 at the moment uh, over the ground. Um, but basically this can be set up for a touring type aircraft or it can be set up for you know, short field type stuff going into backcountry strips. Um, but now I can get between them long distance backcountry strips, which is really, really cool. At the moment, it's only telling us that we're burning 11.4 liters an hour. I don't trust that too much. I'm pretty sure we're going to be in the region of about 15 to 16 liters an hour. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of range on this aircraft. Not that you want to be sitting in the aircraft for that long, um, but you, if you do get in trouble, you have you have got a few options there, yeah, and all, with all this drag, that's what you've got to remember, with all this drag of these big 26 inch thunder tires, we've got the Alaskan uh, uh, oleo-pneumatic uh, landing gear, all of that is in the wind and it's slowing us down. Uh, we've got big struts on these uh, wings, yes they do have fairings and uh, they are aer aerodynamically designed, 
Uh, but you all know the uh, purpose and the drag, anything that's in the wind is going to slow this aircraft down. Um, so yeah, to be able to push through that drag and get to 97 knots indicated and true out at 110, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty darn good. Okay, so we can turn around here and we'll just make it a slow turn here. There's not too much rudder input. Um, this is the newer design Safari, which we don't require too much rudder input on this uh, tail dragger normally. With smaller tail draggers, you do need a little bit of rudder input to keep the aircraft coordinated. Uh, with this one, you don't really need too much. You sort of just lean on the rudder, touch it slightly as you turn into the angler bank. Um, and that's about it, really. Especially when you're going at this speed like this, the tail is, uh, well, the horizontal, excuse me, the vertical stabilizer is working quite well. What I can do is basically, before we get to Panorama, I'm just going to climb up a little bit and show you what the stall speed is here on this aircraft with full flaps as we come into land. I just want to get up a touch higher, so about 6.5, and then what we'll do is we'll pull full flap, which we can actually do now. That's full flap and we can reduce the power and induce the stall. Alright, so we're going to maintain 6,500 feet. That's 50 knots. 45, 43. So here is that where it starts to sort of buffet. Uh, you don't get much of a stall uh, indication. Let's just try that again. So we're going to pull up. Forty-one, thirty-nine, thirty-eight, and we have a slight wing drop to the right-hand side there. Um, so thirty-eight knots. I think that was the best place where I got the the right stall, where we had a ring, wing drop to the right. Thirty-eight knots was about where we stalled. So we can actually fly the approach into Panorama at about fifty knots. Um, dump those flaps. You know, as soon as we about to touch down, reduce all lift and then get it to land as short as possible. Like I say, the pilots that can land a lot shorter than other pilots, um, it's all about technique on the landing, but I just wanted to show you what the sort of stall speed is here. 38 knots indicated, um, so if you can, you know, get to a, a decently short runway, you basically can fly it in at 50, 45 knots and then just drop it onto the runway and stop it. I would say in about 50 meters, a good pilot would be able to stop this in, in 50 meters. So yeah. So let's head back to Panorama now. I can see the runway on my, on my long final for the 02 runway at Panorama. So I can get to the threshold with a decent amount of speed, especially if I've got a long runway or if I'm going into a slightly larger runway. I can uh, come in at you know, 95, 96 indicated, um, so if I do have traffic behind me, and then I can actually just reduce my power, and then that blade actually flattens it out completely, creates a lot of drag, and you slow down very quickly. Um, so we'll actually demonstrate that now here. Um, as we come in at uh, 94, 95 knots, 22 inches of manifold. I've got a slight uh, descent going as we uh, come towards the runway here. And then I'd say about 200 meters before we arrive to the runway, we can pull the power all the way back in, put the flaps in, pitch up slightly for our speed, and then land nice and short at the same time. Here we are. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the power all the way back. That prop is now gonna basically flatten out completely. My speed is coming down at 80, and as we get below 80, I can pull my flaps. All right, now we're at 70 knots. Okay, we're gonna pull the trim back a touch at 65 knots. Okay, 60 knots. And we're slowed down to our speed that we want on final. 55, 54. That's essentially how short I'm going to get this, um, but basically 
what happened there is my brakes are a little bit spongy, so we need to have those re -bleeded. Um But yeah, we, we came in, there's actually no wind on the ground here, so that doesn't help too much. Um, but we came in at about 53 knots and then uh, put it down on the ground as soon as possible. When we got to about 42, 43, I dumped the flaps. We reduced all that uh, lift that the flaps were creating. It dropped us right onto the ground. And with this aircraft, I can pull the stick all the way back. We are quite hard on the brakes, and uh, the nose doesn't actually tip forward. The tail does stay on the ground. So yeah, that's basically, in a nutshell, how you land this aircraft. Like I say, it's not going to be as short as the best pilot in the world. Um, but it's short enough for any sort of strip that I'm wanting to go into. That's what we call a tail up taxi. Not very good for the end, but good to practice though, in case you break the tail wheel. <laughs> Alright, so that's the performance of this aircraft. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this didn't stop recording. I think it did, but we can catch something together. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, uh, It'd be great if you do so, helps us out so much and then you'll be notified the next time I do upload a video. Uh, and then perhaps click the bell as well, I think they send you an email every time I post a, a new video. I'm going to try and post a few um, or videos more often now, so I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.